John. Sean. I'm here with John Blyler at the GDC, that's the Game Developers Conference, 2013 at the Moscone Convention Center in San Francisco. It is packed. It's, it's, it's busy. A lot of excitement. And a lot, uh, m much of the talk and the discussion is, is about the transition of the video game industry, kind of a, the reshaping uh, of the industry itself. Not so much, well, it's actually about business models and yes. and pixels and pixels yeah and pixels and also image sensors because because the market itself is is shifting now and it has a huge mobile component but even the com big console companies are, are looking at tablets and and mo a mobile presence so but whether it's pixels or sensors you still got to have good graphic engines good uh, processors absolutely well let's we're here at the imagination booth and we're here with David Harold hello hi is the uh, a senior director at the, uh, with the marketing communications with Imagination Technologies. Um, Imagination is a leader in multimedia and, and, and communications technologies. Yeah, we sh should be really clear about what we mean by leader as well. Right. It's not some sort of vague moral superiority. I mean, we're the volume leader. The we've, volume. we've got about a 70% market share for graphics with billion units shipped. We're also the leader in video IP with half a billion units shipped. So. That's a nice position to be in, but the reason that we're the volume leader is because the technology is terribly good and really designed for mobile and embedded first. Well, you know, David, uh, John and I were talking about how mobile devices are driving the need for more low power graphics. Yeah, and, and high performance too. High performance, time. facial recognition, animation, we'll augmented, augmented reality. Yep. Yeah, and that, that's a really interesting discussion because, of course, if you just talk about it, you say, okay, GPUs need to be very low power, and people start immediately at somewhere in the back of their mind thinking, okay, there's a lot of compromises being made there. If it's going to be low power, it's also going to be low polygon, it's not going to be feature rich, it's probably not terribly good compared to what I'm used to on my console in the living room or whatever else. But that's completely not the case now. I mean, in the seven years or so that 3D has been in the mobile market, it has leapt ahead in terms of performance to the point now where we have some amazing content that looks like a console. Can you and and can you show us something? We got <laughs> well, we've got it right here. All, all you got to do is point the camera at it. Yeah. So this is actually a demo that we've put together for GDC with Unity, who are one of the major providers of, of middleware and engine technology for people who are creating mobile game content. Now, if you look at this, all the kinds of features that you would expect to have in a console game are in here, starting with the basics. So each of these characters is built up of around 40,000 vertices. So that's pretty much the same complexity that you get in a home console game, but this is on mobile. Then everything else is in there. Complex lighting, bloom, HDR, atmospheric scattering, um, skin, subsurface scattering, so you get really realistic skin effects. And these models are created by you know, the same people who do movies in, in Hollywood. So you have these complex models and lots of technique to make it look very realistic if that's the effect that you're after you know it could be hyper realistic but you know indistinguishable from a console content and when you and when you say mobile that's exactly what you mean oh, i mean we're, we're, it's this tablet this. is connected to this screen everything is on here it's not a video let me if i touch it i can slow it down so you can see the effects i can move wow. the camera around so you can see it's all you know, being generated on the fly. It's not, you know, it's not a video of something we may do one day. This is what these devices can do right now. Right, right. This is amazing. I mean, uh, I was talking to John. I said, I, I usually get eight hours of beauty sleep. Well, nine because I'm ugly. A little more, yeah. I need 11. So you can make me look pretty darn good in this. <laughs> well. Yeah, so, so I mean. Could we? we? We could. What we really want to do is we want to take you know, new worlds. We want to create something immersive where somebody looks at it and thinks, okay, I'm part of this world, I'm part of this scene, I'm playing through this, you know, addition to my life, this adventure. And 
One of the ways you can do that is by making it look like what people expect to see. Um, so a lot of the effects here actually are things like the lens flares, the, uh, the different kinds of blooms that you see, all of these, these aren't things that you see in real life. You and I aren't seeing them now. They are what you would see if you were watching a movie of something. And these kinds of effects, nonetheless, they're what people expect. And being able to provide them gives them a sense of a, a sort of very similitude in a, a movie-like adventure kind of a context. Was it uh, working with Unity, right, the, 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 the big engine folks, I mean, was that pretty straightforward? Did they just call some libraries from, uh, I mean, how, how does it actually work from a developer standpoint, just in like 30 words or less? I mean, I'm <laughs> Well, so, so there's a lot of things in, in the way we work. So we work with Unity and we work with other engine providers and the middleware providers, of course. And one of the big things that we do is we provide a set of tools, what we call an SDK. It's a software development kit that people can go and they can download from our website completely for free. And it helps them not only build the basic building blocks of these sorts of things, the textures, etc., but also, once they've built them, to really get in there, to look at hooks in the hardware, to see this is what is happening in terms of performance. This is how much of my texturing unit is being used. This is how much of the hardware is available still to me so I could pump up the graphics even further and we provide those kinds of tools so that people can build this sort of content and we work with people like Unity so that they can make use of all the stuff that we're doing behind the scenes to help enable better use of our hardware and then they can build that into their engines and they can do optimizations and of course there are lots of conversations that go around that just making sure that what everybody does really ties together and gives the best result for gamers. Well, awesome. yeah, this is great. So uh, I really appreciate your time uh, with Imagination Technologies, David Harold. You know what John and I are going to do? We're going to take kind of an augmented reality. We're going to go down to, down to the ship level. So we're going to beam down there. Just don't get lost. All right. <laughs> we'll see you next time. Cheers. All right.